Hello again, and welcome to the third screencast in the Academic Affairs Initiative, Eastern Ahead. In the first screencast, we introduced the website for the Education Advisory Board, of which EKU is a member, EAB.com, and the e-learning modules available in the Student Success Collaborative section of EAB's website. Those modules are a terrific starting point for understanding how the Student Success Collaborative can benefit the advising work you're already doing. In the second screencast, we demonstrated access to the Student Success Collaborative through EKU's website. We talked about the login process and provided a very brief navigation of the main Student Success Collaborative page, including the Institutional Analytics button and the Students tab. In this screencast and those that follow, we will work within the Students tab exclusively. Ready to do that? On the Students page, the first thing you see is a welcome message and a series of prompts. Create a list, create a watch list, and upload to watch list. We'll tackle each of those, but the first and most useful for you is creating a list. Let's start by choosing to create a list of advisees, a logical place to start. To do that, click the plus sign beside the word lists, then choose advisor slash group, then search your name and select it. I searched Hunter. I found one for George Hunter, which is my first name. I prefer Gil, but George will do for our purposes today. Then you will scroll down to select term enrollment. You'll select Currently Enrolled, and you'll be ready to click the button Apply. Once you click Apply, then you can save your list using a unique name. I'll call this one Advising 1617, since this is my list of advisees for 2016-17, and I'll click the Save button. Once you do that, there's an Export button that you can click, and that will open a spreadsheet with student data and information. And I can save that spreadsheet to my desktop or an advising folder and use the information contained within it in any way I might need to. If I click on a student's name, I'm able to move through my list of advisees in this case by clicking Next Student at the top of the entry for any student. And I'm able to go back to a previous student as necessary by clicking the button logically labeled Previous Student. The most noticeable portion of the student list, and also the most noticeable portion of any student entry, is the brightly colored identification of risk level, low, moderate, or high. The assignment of risk level is based on milestone courses, departments, and programs identified, and the predictability of success for students who graduated in that major with certain grades in those milestone courses. So you see here I have a student with a low level of risk. My next student, similarly a low level of risk. My next student, a low level of risk, which means I'm in pretty good shape for advising, I would say. And my next student has a high level of risk. So what I can do immediately when I see that that risk level is high is look over here on the left-hand side of the main entry part of the page and I can identify the reasons for that high risk level assignment. Here I see that English 102 and EDF 203, those milestone courses marked for this program, were problematic for this student, and so I'm going to need to pay special attention to that student during advising and maybe during the semester as well. I also notice here that there is a flag beside GPA, and GPAs are flagged when a student is on probation another reason why I might want to pay special attention to a student. Just like that brightly colored identification of risk, when I look at my main student list page, I can see those same kinds of flags on the column right beside risk level. So if you've done that, if you've created your plus sign and you've searched for your name and you've chosen your current term for the enrollment, then you have your advising list saved. And you're ready now to spend some time studying your advisees 
and familiarizing yourself with the Student Success Collaborative. The next screencast will demonstrate more of the features of the Student Success Collaborative and will delve more deeply into how the SSC can supplement the advising we already do.